So what I would like to now is we, we've got the cattle ready for the first move of the day. So I would like for uh, y'all to talk to us about in this particular herd, tell us the composition of the herd, how many head are in the herd, average weight, and what we're anticipating in terms of our move today. What size of paddock did you have to build to accommodate them for this day and why? And how many moves are you gonna make today? Well, Judy builds all the paddocks. Uh, she uses the CARES map to figure out, we go over it about how many acres they're gonna need for a move. And she uses a, a computer program to know she's exact, pretty close to being exact out there. But in this case, there's uh, 68 yearling heifers being bred. Mm -hmm. And there's 60 of the two-year-olds with calves. Um, we run two groups this time of year. We have the, the main herd, and then we have this herd of the younger breeding animals. We breed every heifer we have, unless it's you know a, a real a real problem or, or uh, needs to be moved. But otherwise, we give them all a chance to be bred for 42 days. So we have I don't know about 120,000 pounds in here. We measure the grass. We know about what we want to leave behind. That's the first day. We don't measure the grass every day. We just once we make that first move, we have a good idea of what we need to do yes. the next day. Um, but Judy will set it up. In this case, we're moving them twice a day, uh, and they're going to be, you know, that's going to be, what, an acre and a half? Because there's a three-acre total here of what they'll have for the day. And uh, she moves them um, morning and evening. And when it's really hot, we come out in the afternoons and move them a little earlier because they forget it's hot when they have new grass to go to. So what are your considerations when you're, when you're thinking about meeting their daily forage dry matter needs? What are the things that you're thinking about and, and what do you measure out here to determine how big to build that paddock? Well, you know, it does depend on the growth of the plants, uh -huh. what they're looking like, how much they're going to eat, uh, if it's gotten away, if it's a lot much taller, and how much we're going to trample, how much we're going to graze, and how much we're going to leave. So when we're grazing really tall stuff, we'll say like we'll be grazing maybe 40%, 30%. We'll trample 30% and we'll leave 30% and move on, especially in early, early spring when we're moving them rather quickly. Excellent. So I see you're carrying a stick there. Use that stick to measure the average forage height. Yeah. I always lose my grazer stick or I give it away, so I make my own. Yep. And uh, all this one has on it, you know, because you've been doing this long enough. Uh, every six, every three inches. I see. Yeah, every three inches. And we stick it in and just multiply you know, that by about 300 pounds. If it's thin, it's like droughty like it is now. Might be 250. And we figure the weight in here, which is about 120,000 pounds. I usually go with 3% of their body weight. Yep. So we look, we need 3,600 pounds today. What is this producing? And how much do we want to leave behind? Which is usually at least half, if not more. So once it gets going, you know, it's a fairly simple formula to, to at least do your first paddock with. Yeah, so the beauty of moving cattle every day and even sometimes multiple times a day is that we do have that ability to be able to observe, right? And if we made a mistake that day, say the cattle took too much, right? Or we didn't get the type of trample effect we were after or manure and urine coverage that we were after, then it's pretty simple to correct it the very next day. Or if you're moving twice a day as you are right now, you can judge what happens in the very first paddock of the day and the second paddock of the day, you can correct any mistakes that you made. So you can automatically and immediately adjust the size of those paddocks. So the beautiful thing about adaptive grazing, and, and you said earlier that you also call it flex grazing, and by the way, so do I. Yeah. Uh, so we, we call it adaptive or flex grazing. So your terminology, I think, is dead on, and, and it is the words mean exactly what we think they mean. You know, we've got to be flexible, we've got to be adaptive. So that's what we're able to do by moving cattle at least once a day and sometimes multiple times a day, right? Mm -hmm. We can easily adjust to whatever our eyes are telling us and whatever the cattle are telling us and whatever the conditions on the ground are telling us and immediately correct our mistakes. And, and the beauty of that is versus more conventional grazing is that with conventional grazing, we often don't notice mistakes until we're well into our grazing season. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And by that time, we have literally impacted our entire grazing season 
And a lot of times, the next grazing season that's gonna happen in the next year or even four years. So we can have end grazing season impact, years and even years long impact if we make the wrong decisions under more conventional or set stock grazing. But with this type of grazing, the beautiful part of this is that every mistake we make is a very small incremental mistake that we can immediately correct. And if I'm gonna make a mistake, I don't know about y'all, but I'd rather make one that I can correct pretty quick, right. right? Let's talk about the cattle now and what you're getting ready to do, Judy. So we've, we've talked about the number of head mm -hmm. that are out here and the classes of cattle that are represented. You, you've, again, you've got an average from your calculations of available forage dry matter per acre. You have determined that, that you need about a three acre size paddock. So you're, you're, you've calculated your available forage dry matter. And again, your goal is right now to not allow them to consume more than 50% of what's available, somewhere between 40 and 50%. Mm -hmm. And you want 50 to 60% that's going to be a combination of both what is left standing and trample. Correct. Okay, so to do that, then you have determined that your paddock size for the growth that we see out here right now needs to be about three acres a day to accommodate these animals. But you're moving them twice a day. So you're splitting each paddock into one and a half acres. Now you have a total of 120,000 pounds of cattle out here. So if we're putting them on one and a half acres for a portion of the day, the second one and a half acres for the next portion of the day, that's 120,000 divided by 1.5 acres, right? Yeah. So we've got an effective stock density per acre of 80,000 pounds per acre. Now, let me ask you this question. You know, stock densities under adaptive or flex grazing, we can purposefully vary those, right? And oftentimes we want to, mm -hmm. depending on our goals and objectives. So we can go much lower or we can go much, much higher on stock density and then anywhere in between. But if we make this relative to the average grazing farm here in Missouri, that is grazing conventionally, their annual stock density per acre is going to be no more than 500 pounds. Really? Hmm. So if we think about that, and you're at 80,000 pounds per acre, and their effective stock density per acre on an annual basis is only 500 pounds, then that's an exponential difference, isn't it? It is. As far as our stocking rates and the change over the years, or over the seasons, when we're calving, we move quickly, because we're calving in the middle of April and into May. Grass is growing extremely quickly. Uh, so what we're looking to do is cover as much ground as we can, but you got baby calves and, uh, you know, cows are calving, they want to find their, we like to have them isolate themselves. So we move the fence forward, we don't move a fence backwards for quite a while, so they can move back and forth, but we're moving quickly so they get more of the ground. So our densities will be, you know, 20 to 30,000 pounds at times. Right. Then as we are through calving and the calves fit right into the system, we close it up a little bit. and then. After we pull the bulls out, we get a little more dense. Uh, we'll go up to the 60,000 pounds, 80,000 pounds, because now we're asking them to come back and eat some of that tough stuff that they missed the first time. As we come into the fall season, we're slowing down that rotation so that we uh, allow the grass to start growing, get ahead of it for going into the fall and winter, and our densities will increase during that time. But when the grass is, is through growing, when we get into December, January, we're not going to get any more growth. That's when we, if we're going to have high densities every day, that's when we usually use it. Because now we're looking at getting 85% utilization, leaving 15%. We have no more growth. We're trying to make sure we uh, utilize it as, as well as we can to get through that winter without feeding as much hay. And then spring comes back around and we start all over again. But that's how it progresses for us is low density in the spring lower density in the spring, always a daily move, um, at least a daily move. So we have a lower density in the spring. We get a little more dense if we pull the bulls out, combine the herds together. Yep. And then 
as we get into the <coughs> winter period, when the grass quits growing, we get higher density because we're looking for a lot higher utilization.